Because SVG elements have more in common with our HTML DOM, where they have nodes and attributes and values and so on, we have the ability to modify various things inside an SVG image, like the color, for example, using nothing but CSS and JavaScript. So in this video, we're going to walk through exactly how to do that. And to e emphasize how familiar SVG content looks like, here's an image of an elephant that I exported in both an SVG format and a PNG format. When I open the SVG image in a text editor, notice that you see things that look like very much like our HTML. You, have, you see an SVG element, there's a path element, a circle element, and various attributes and values, very familiar things. When I open the same PNG image though, in a text editor, notice that what we see is kind of unintelligible. It's not really meant for human consumption or for anybody's consumption actually, except for some kind of an image renderer. So the three ways we're going to look at how to modify the internals of an SVG, more specifically the color, we're going to look at the CSS selector approach first, we're going to use the custom properties approach to expand upon that next, and then we'll wrap things up by looking at good old fashioned JavaScript DOM manipulation. Now you can absolutely just sit back and watch how I'm going to do this, but if you want to follow along, there's a code pen I created that you can use. It's bit.ly slash svg underscore change underscore color. Now with that, let's go ahead and get started. So what I have here is a very basic HTML page. I'm in my favorite editor here, which is IDX. And what you can see is that we have an SVG element. This element has two elements under it, path elements, and you can see the representation of it is the sunglasses that you see here. And so using the CSS selector approach, what we want to do is change the, both the frame and the lenses that are currently appearing. So the first thing I want to do is we have our SVG element. We see that the color of the frame is going to be specified by this path element and the color of the frames or the lenses will be specified by the second path element right here. So to target these two various elements using CSS, I need a way to identify them and many ways of solving this, but I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way, get a class value of frame and I'm going to give the second path element the class value of lenses. And once I've done this, I can target them in CSS using typical CSS selector syntax. So I'm going to do dot frame, have one style rule here. My second style rule will be for dot lenses and have various values inside of it. Now, what I want to do though, is we want to change the color of the element. And you can see that the color of both of these path elements is specified by the fill attribute. And the value then is just your typical hex value. It can be any type of an image format that our browser supports. So what I want to do first, let me figure out what, let me get my notes here and figure out the color, is that I want to say that, you know, let's give the, let's give our lenses a yellow color and a frame a red color. So I'm going to go to my frame first. I mean, we're just targeting this path element. I'm going to type in fill and then colon, and the value is going to be FF2929. And similarly for lenses, I'm going to go ahead and type in fill, and the value is going to be just a FFFF00, very bright yellow. And so once I've done that, when I refresh this page, you'll now see that our sunglasses look very different. I have a red frame, and they have some yellow lenses. And all I did was I gave our path elements a class attribute to make it easier to select them. And then I specified the fill CSS property, which corresponds to the fill attribute in the path element itself. So that's the selector based approach. And of course, because the CSS selector, you have many ways of doing this. You can even do SVG and then go to the path and use the various, you know, nth child element syntax to target the first and second without actually giving them a class value to reemphasize many ways of doing it. It's a standard CSS. Now, the other approach, of course, is to use custom properties. You know, you don't have to actually give them values the way we're doing it right now. So let me go ahead and just actually, just for kicks, remove the two style rules that we have here. So it goes back to its original color. And instead, what I want to do is give it, uh, use a custom property to define its colors instead. Now, I'm going to go ahead and define a root selector. So that way, you know, it's going to be available globally to my entire page. And I'm going to create two properties. One is frame. And I'm going to set the value to FF2929, which is the same color we saw earlier. And then I'm going to create a property called lenses and give it the value of FFF00. Again, same colors we saw before. Now, to have these custom properties get applied to our particular SVG here, 
We could continue to use a, a selector-based approach where I specify the field property and the field property's value to frame, or it can be more direct. It can just go directly to our SVG, type in var slash slash frame, and then similarly, var slash slash lenses, and now you can see that the colors are now displaying appropriately. And if I want to do something more, you know, more fancy, like a, a green and yellow color, I can absolutely do that. And you can see that color is also now reflected. All I had to do was just change the value of a CSS custom property, which is pretty, pretty cool. If you can think about it, that all it has is an SVG element, but its contents are now fully manipulated outside of the SVG using runtime capabilities. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is how to change the values using JavaScript. And so let's go ahead and you know, we'll keep the frame. Let's keep the frame and let this values as they are right now. That's totally cool. I'm going to go to the bottom, have a script element, and I'm going to go ahead and use some JavaScript. And the way I'm going to do this is any JavaScript DOM manipulation technique will apply here. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to use query selector, get a reference to each of these two path elements, and then change the attribute directly using the set attribute method. So I'm going to do let frame equals document dot query selector and dot frame is not going to get that. Let lenses equals document dot query selector again. And this case is going to be lenses. If this code is written properly and you know, it might not be, but I think it is, you'll get a reference to these two DOM elements. And then I'm going to do frame dot set attribute and give it the value fill, which is the attribute we want to modify. And its value is going to be one, 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 one. So it's going to be a very, very dark gray. And then lenses that set attribute will be again, same fill attribute. And it's the value is going to be seven C F F F. It's going to be a, a nice looking glasses. I think I'm going to refresh the page and let's see what's going on here. Oh, I misspelled selector. And now you can see it's a very dark gray frame with some blue lenses. Now, the thing is, these, the custom properties are being applied, but because of the order of operations and precedence, the JavaScript runs last and it precedes and overrides whatever value is provided here. It's more of an inline value that gets set, which is higher specificity than what we have in specified in CSS. Now, that's really the, a very lightning fast overview are the three ways it takes to modify the contents of an SVG element. We focus on color, so the various styling, CSS, and JavaScript approaches we looked at were very color specific, but we can extend this to any of like the, the size of an element, the, the border width, the stroke, the values, anything can be modified using any one of these approaches. Now, the thing I want to tie back to is that we can't do this with like a, a PNG file or a, a TIFF file or a JPEG or any of these other formats that aren't really designed for manipulation using the HTML DOM or JavaScript or CSS, which means that this is a hugely valuable technique for so many theming and styling scenarios. For example, when I do dark mode on the Krupa.com website, I actually use a lot of inline SVGs and I use these custom properties to actually modify the colors. So I have one image, but that one image can actually be viewed through a bunch of different color combinations, which is very convenient and you'll see the kind of techniques used more and more as more personalizable, customizable UI becomes the norm. So if you have any questions about this, please post in the forums at formatcrew.com where I and others would be happy to help you out. It's a very friendly community of other web developers. So definitely, you know, join and participate. And of course, if you want to follow along with all the other things that are going on, you can subscribe to my newsletter, follow me at Krupa on various locations and check out the books. Links for all of this will be below in the description. And with that, I will see you all next time.